Okay. Uh, let's move to Dyson Daniels. Dyson. Okay. You're up. My no fit first there day. was also the Pelicans. Oh, I like the Pelicans. That was my second Because choice. what is the one thing we say that Dyson needs? Uh, there's a few things that, that Dyson needs. What What's the one you're thinking of? I was going to say. Shooting. <laughs> like needs to be able to shoot. Yeah, right. Okay. Consistently. Yeah. yeah. They know there's a like if he shoots so. consistently, he's at, he's at the very least a starter and a high level impact player on a playoff team. Right. Like, no no questions, right? Well, I mean, you just listen to David Griffin on Ryan Rosillo's podcast. Shout out, Rosillo. Uh, the thing that he said is that we feel confident that we can get guys to improve their shooting because we have Fred Vinson, who's one of the best shooting coaches in the NBA. Dyson fits a lot of what they need and what they could use. I mean, the ball is going to be in Brandon Ingram's hands a lot. It's going to be in Zion Williamson's hands right. a lot. Um, I think that it makes a lot of sense there to go with Dyson because his shot isn't broken. If it's just small things, like you could see a world where Fred Vinson has him shooting like at a reasonable level at low volume this year and then like at medium volume next year even. Eliminate the dip. He has a big dip when he catches and goes down. I I'm laughing because you mentioned the podcast that David Griffin's on. You're taking some fingerprints on it. And if you watched the Celtics game last night, I, I hope you did. One of the reporters asked Draymond Green and said, Hey, you kind of say a lot on your podcast about like defensive coverages. Do you think like the opposing teams listen to that? That's neither here nor there. The fact that podcasts have become such this main space thing for clues and, and basketball is just amazing to me. For Dyson Daniels, I went with Washington. And why I went with Washington is they've needed yeah. a point guard for a few years now. And he's not a traditional point, but he can guard or defer uh, on offense. He can become more of a point guard later in the year. It works well next to Bradley Beal as he doesn't always need the ball. Dyson doesn't always need the ball to be effective. Brad Beal can have the ball in his hands, be ball dominant, be comfortable with that. And then if they want to go the route where it's flip the ball to the other side, to, to Dyson, for Brad to come down for pinoff, to him to make, make some plays, you can do that. And Dyson can still cut and move. It's a youth play. He's a very uh, young player. The development can still be there. and It's not have to be like day one, ball in your hands. We don't have any guards figured out. Yeah, I also love this fit. I think this makes so, so much sense next to Bradley Beal, especially if Beal is going to stick around there long term. Uh, I, I would absolutely like sprint to the podium if I was the Wizards and Dyson Daniels was still on the board. Um, would be enormous for them. I, I think that he adds every single thing that they really, truly need Uh from an organizational perspective, if they're going to continue to go down this road that they're going down developmentally. Uh, I love that idea. I love Dyson Daniels uh, to the Wizards. I think it makes so, so much sense. Uh, 